four pillars of relating webinar today. The theme is low drama, high drama in relationship. And uh, I will guide you through this idea uh, in the next, I don't know, half an hour. I will tell before a little bit about myself, what this webinar is about and what you will learn. So my name is Matt. I'm living right now in Berlin. Um, I see myself as a global nomad. I've been crash landing in Berlin in this Corona pandemic thing and um, have been inventing myself into the online world. Uh, so I've been traveling for about 10 years teaching um, the sacred art of uh, sexuality, uh, communication, bodywork sessions and empowerment, couple counseling, uh, doing workshops, retreats, festivals, so all this jabang what people do um, if they're feeling passionate about this amazing transformative work. This is the second of two webinars. It's followed by a four week online training next week on Sunday the 4th. It is the four pillars of relating and how you can use the dynamics of somatic consent in any form of relating, but mainly in intimate relating. And that can be with your beloved one or with a, a friend, with a colleague, so that you literally can use this, what you learn in your daily life. And um, that the four pillars of relating is not only uh, limited to uh, engaging with an, with a lover or with in a, in a, in a couple. So um, I ask people, if you want to join there, bring somebody you would like to explore and experience the dynamics with. And um, I will, at the end of this webinar, give you a link where you can sign up. There is an extra bonus of 50 euro less if you would like to join. And you feel totally welcome to use that. Four pillars of relating. Last week, I've been talking about uh, what the four pillars are. Um, I was talking about relating and the dynamics of relating. And uh, I've been asking around, what do you think what relating is? Because I have to say, I don't know. And whatever I'm saying here, uh, don't take that as the only truth. So what I'm saying is something that I've found that resonates with me and that works for me. And I have I have tested that practice for years um, in all kinds of relating. So when I say that I don't know, that means that you know what your form of relating is and that uh, it's differently in each and one of you. So the way how I want to relate is based on having agreements that are in alignment with my desire and my limits and with the desire and the limits of the per partner I'm relating with. And that can be a relationship that is just like a five minute meeting if I'm with somebody that is based on mutual respect and um, um, care. Or that can be, you know, with family or a colleague or a lover with whomever you want. So you choose how your container of relationship is um, based on. And that's what the four pillars of relating is for, so that you can create the relationship that you want to have with people you want to relate with. And with some people, we just certainly don't want to relate. And that's good too. So that we just make that choice uh, as well. So that relationship um, happens in this place of um, what is it that we want to do with another person and uh, what is the agreement. So um, it's so funny. I just always wonder, is it the weather or is it the theme? Last time you were just like 20 people or so. And uh, so welcome each and one of you. Thank you for making your way here today on Sunday. Can you hear me well and see me well? Is it is it good enough? Okay. Um, I'm good sometimes in fucking stuff up. <laughs> All right, so um, let's see, how do I want to start? I think a sip of water first. So 
I want to start with the four pillars um, of relating in a kind of a general explanation. So that the first of the four pillars is literally self-care self and self-love. So that means that um, I'm responsible for my feeling, you're responsible for your feelings. If I'm thirsty, I take care and drink. If I need to go to the bathroom, I just go to the bathroom. And that's my rights and my responsibilities. And you have the same rights and same responsibilities so that nobody else can give you permission for self-care. That just belongs to you like it belongs to me. So that we are all in the same in the same boat of being in our own choices about ourself. Does that make sense so far? First level, self-care, self-love, easy task. Nobody else can give you permission to drink a bit of water or go to the bathroom or uh, for you take your camera on or off. You know, if you just feel like you just want to have your camera off, self-care is vital. Sometimes in bigger workshops, I ask people to turn on their cam that we can see that you're all real people so that everyone feels safe. But um, that's a different uh, show now. So please feel totally entitled to turn your camera on or off as you like. I'm uh, good with both. So when I am taking responsibility of my feelings and of my of myself, so of my thoughts, of my emotions, my body, and the entire um, landscape of what I'm responsible for, then the second layer is the person I'm engaging with. If I want to do something for myself or um, I want to give permission to that other person to do something for themselves in my environment, I give permission or I ask for permission. So the, the permission dynamic. So with my partner, I just have this agreement um, that I have permission at any time to do whatever I want to do within their limits. So that if my partner has a limit that is coming up, that I take um, their responsibility um, for real, that they can express their limits. Same way I give permission to my partner to my partner to do whatever my partner want to do, where I take full responsibility for my limits. So that we are both um, having with each other granted permission to be in action for ourselves with the other person. And when it comes to touch and connection or intimate relationship, I actually expand that you can touch me with any part of your body on any part of my body, whenever you want, I take care of my limits. And I ask for the same permission to touch you with any part of my body on any part of your body, you take care of your limits so that we don't have to ask every five seconds, can I hold your hand? Can I, hold, can I hug you? Can I kiss you? Can I feel you? Um, and that's a really vital point in relationship because doing that every five seconds is a total killer because we just wanna flow and wanna go into that place of where we can relate with each other um, in a harmonious way. However, when you're with another person, with a colleague or with a friend or with anybody else where you don't have this mutual permission in place and you want to borrow somebody else's car, you know, you need permission to do that. Yeah, otherwise, it's stealing. And, um, and it's a good skill to have when you know how to ask other people for permission if you want to use somebody else's resources. Yeah. Can I can I have your bathtub? Can I can you borrow me um, your apartment for a week when you're on holiday? And um, and then uh, we talked about that as well. That there are two different um, dynamics in place when we ask for permission that we have to respect the other person's limit and that they both go hand in hand. So we cannot ask you for what we want and putting our desire forward when we don't take responsibility for somebody else's limit. So when we don't respect that, then um, it's not um, very supportive. Second uh, permission. So the third one is 
if I want you to do something for me, then please ask me. You can ask me for whatever you want. And um, please don't do anything to please me so that you um, step into your own power of asking what is that what you want me to do. And, um, and I will take care of my limits if I have them. And the other way around, well, I'm not here to please you and make you happy and make you feel good. Um, if you want something from me, you, you just ask me for whatever you want. So that there is a mutual agreement with each other to asking what we want the other person to do. And um, there comes the same dynamic in place that when um, I ask for what I want, uh, then I have to respect the other person's limit when they're saying no or they're not willing to do that. But that is not diminishing my desire or that's not um, making my um, what I want smaller because I still want what I want. And if, if you have a limit and I ask you, you can, uh, even if you ask me and I say no and I have a limit that your desire is still valuable even if I'm not willing to do that so that we can actually be in our desire and um, and our expression of our limits and um, what we are not willing to do at the same time so these three layers there are the kind of um, dynamics of really engaging and taking responsibility for what we want and why we're taking care of ourselves and uh, having self-love in place and then we come to the fourth one and that's the dynamic of um, the apex i call that the interpersonal space of love and care when we are with another person that we um, want to flow we want to dance you know we just want to merge and we want to have this good time with each other we uh, want to engage in an um, uplifting way and um, and some people say, yeah, just wait a second, can't we in there all the time? Can't we be in harmonious, uh, happy ever after till death takes us apart as Mickey Mouse and Walt Disney has taught us so um, perfectly? No. That's a, I think that's a good romantic dream to have. Um, but I think it's not functional because sometimes we have different desires. We have different, we have different directions. And there is an, a, a parallel function in relationship. And when I'm talking in the somatic consent engagement system about the shadows, it is this stuff where one person is doing something that can perceive from the other person as a shadow. So when I'm talking about shadows in normal, it is this dynamic where, um, where we can't ask for what we want and doing all kinds of stuff to get our needs met or where we can't say no when our partner is asking us. However, when we have mutual agreements in place and um, we engaging with each other, then it might depend on the um, emotional state that we have and that can variate. Sometimes when we feel in kind of in a bad mood and not really wanting to engage or to relate, uh, we have a different engagement with our partner than as if we are just totally in ease and flow and everything is good and then we are loving harmony and everything merges. So that when our partner is doing one day one thing that we totally love and admire and adore and we just want to merge and having a good time can be another day completely annoying and then we're just putting our partner into this place of just like you know is this all your fault you make me feel this way because you did this and you do that so where we're just giving our power away from our experience of ourselves to our partner is just all your, all your fault. Can you relate to that? I've done that, tons of that. 
<laughs> so that that the shadows are actually happening um, simultaneously, and they can happening when we um, in a bad mood and we putting ourselves in a victimized state. So where we making our you know where we making ourselves and our feeling um, or where we putting ourselves in a victimized state where we not taking responsibility, where we just making it the other person's fault. So when I'm putting myself in this place of um, um, feeling victimized, I put my partner automatically in the position of being a um, perpetrator. Yeah, or like an, it's, it's just uh, assaulting or bullying or, um, you know, what, what, what my partner says on one day can um, be totally uplifting for me. And the next day I can just perceive that as an assault and make my partner responsible for not being fine tuned enough to feel me how I, how I yeah, vibrate. <laughs> so that the that the shadows is something that we just want to avoid uh, when we can't handle them or when we can handle them that we can invite them and having a conscious uh, dance and engagement with that so this is this is part of the um, low drama high drama that i would like to show you and um, i show you a little slide about that so low drama, high drama, and this is what I'm talking about. So you have might heard about the low drama triangle. And the low drama triangle is what mostly in um, shadow engaging relationships is going on. It's just all your fault. So the triangle is based on the so-called rescuer um, dynamic. So it's fear-based and based on insecurity. It is um, taking care of the other person's need if they want that or need that, doesn't matter. So we're just going in the rescue dynamic. And then we have the victim dynamic that's related to the feelings of feeling sad um, and uh, projected as weak. So that sadness is something that is not very um, supportive in a relationship. And the third dynamic is the persecutor, the aggression and anger. So the person who is in that place just like uh, um, attacking another person in their behavior. So when there is a relationship between the rescuer, the persecutor and the victim. And this is in every low drama triangle in every relationship, the same dynamic so that the victim is going in that position, oh, poor me, just like what you have done have made me feel that bad and I was feeling sad and this is all your fault and you need to do something because it's your responsibility to make me feel better. And then the person who has done something that wasn't maybe even conscious can put themselves immediately in the opposite position and uh, becomes the rescuer. Oh my God, yeah, no, I'm afraid of that you're leaving me. I've done something wrong. Come on, I'll just do something that you, that you feel better about yourself. So and they're dancing constantly in this low drama around without taking ownership about their feeling. So that's what we want to do in the four pillars of relating training that we're going into that place of that we're taking ownership of the core emotions in our body and in our emotional body. What is literally fear, anger, and sadness. So there's one core feeling missing here and that's joy. So that the low drama or the, the, the four core feelings in our, in our body are four different feelings. So that's sad, mad, glad, and and fear so and this one is joy missing at the moment so joy is literally the one that is in the middle of this dynamic and joy is where we getting something out of creating drama 
where we're feeding ourselves out of drama and where we're creating drama to stay in dependency or keeping other people dependent on our behavior and dynamics that are unhealthy. So the low drama is that guides you into the shadow dynamic. And the shadow dynamics are all this unconscious behavior where we're trying to get our needs met and where we can't ask for what we want and why we can't put our limits outside. So when we take ownership of our feelings of our base, and when we um, take responsibility of how we feel that all this landscape of feelings and emotions all happening inside and not anybody else's fault, um, then we go into ownership of our of our feelings. And there's literally in pure ownership with ourselves, there's something going on that I call no drama. So no drama is great, you know. There is no friction points, no, there's just like um maybe exchanging of information. There is um no really energetics going on it's just it feels like nearly boring and um i don't want to relate that way so i don't want to relate that way you know it's all your fault and i'm not taking ownership and i actually don't want to relate that way where i can't feel myself in totality where i cannot express what's going on and where i have to um, hide so when we get into ownership, we're just actually stepping in no drama in the first place. But that's not the end of the story because we are human beings and we are amongst other human beings. And we want to create and manifest. We want to be creative and we want to play. We want to um, build something meaningful. We want to you know, create something. And this is um, where we start to stepping from low drama into um, the ownership of our feelings where fear is getting transformed into curiosity. So where the quality of fear is literally to keep us focused and curious about the unknown, what comes next without shutting down it's just like okay so maybe we need to slow down and just investigate and look a little bit deeper and then sadness is getting transformed in comfort so literally intimacy is based on sadness so that we that we can transform sadness in connection and comforting and and allowing to um let go of uh, what it doesn't serve any longer. And that comes with a um, package of pain and of comfort. And then anger, instead of protecting and defending, and uh, we just can transform this, we can transform that energy into um, energy. <laughs> So we can transform anger into into manifesting energy. So that if you just want to lift up a rock, then you can use your anger literally to build a house if you want to. And the next one, joy, is being transformed in play and um, um, having fun with each other. So when we can take ownership and we know how to transform this feelings and emotions into a higher quality, then we start entering, I need to move that here a little bit, then we can start to enter into the high drama triangle. What is literally the same triangle, but with full ownership of our feelings and emotions. So where the power of fear, so curiosity, where we become like a 
magicians or where we can use our our power of fear into some magic and uh, um, dynamics of uh, unconventional ways of staying focused with that what is. So we can allow ourselves to dive deeper into the unknown. So the magic around the unknown. And uh, can't see that down here. So that the that the victim, the weak and sadness can transform into intimacy. So the lover's quality is there. So where we can get closer with each other, where sadness has the transformative power of letting go and being seen and getting closer with each other when we can allow ourselves to feel the pain when we have to let go of something. So the lover's quality is in sadness. And the anger is getting transformed into the warrior and in the protector. So that protection um, is this quality of taking care of the weak and people who need support. So that we that we instead of using anger as an um, what's the word destructive energy and, and destroying something, we can use anger as a really high quality protective energy. So when I know somebody else can take care of me with their anger as a warrior and protecting me with their full force and with their full power, you know, I feel I feel safe when somebody can protect me. And that's the same quality that I can feel myself that what really is meaningful to me, that I can use my anger in a creative way to protect what is meaningful. You know, seeing somebody on the street being um, attacked, for example, you know, when my warrior comes out, I can just protect somebody. So that's a really creative energy. Or if I build something that is meaningful with another person, that I can use my anger to protect this project, what we have created. And so that's not the misuse of anger in, in destroying something, is the creative, constructive use of anger in um, um, yeah, protecting. And then we have this middle dynamic, the joy is now missing, like on the other side. So that joy in this dynamic is the visionary, the leader and creator, so that we use the power of our feelings and emotions to create something that is not existing. So we, when we take full ownership and radical responsibility of our feelings and, uh, and what's going on in our body, and we can co-create with another person in a safe, transformative way, then we can build something that doesn't exist. So we can create a reality um, that we want to live in. We can build an entire empire based on our authenticity and autonomy of ownership of our feelings and emotions. What is literally the place of the apex, so the interpersonal space of love and care. So when I talk about this dynamics, I'm very passionate about that because by taking ownership of our feelings, um, some people think that when we are in a low drama triangle and it is destructive, that um, we don't have to feel anything anymore when we're going into high drama or high drama is then even more or more destructive drama. It's actually not the case. The case is when we take ownership of our feelings and allowing low level feelings to occur and being attuned with what our needs and our desires are and we can ask for what we want and we can respect other people's limits, then we can make this shift um, through ownership from low drama into high drama dynamics. And that's really uh, magnificent and transformative. 
Okay, I have a question. So the trans the transform from the uh, low drama to a high drama. I can imagine first you recognize when you are being low in the low drama to transform to the high drama or how is the process uh, of to go from one side to the other side? Yeah, that's a great question. So, so the first thing is um, tracking ourselves uh, in our language that most people say you make me feel and being capable of instead of making it you so that one finger is po pointing that direction and the other three fingers pointing back okay it's actually all about me so i feel so instead of you make me feel ownership is i feel and then the question is how do we take ownership about what I feel and what's going on in my nervous system and in my base, literally? And this is part of the transformation is that we're working with an exercise that calls um, waking up pleasure in your hands. And some people think that this is a really easy thing to do and um, uh, uh, don't really know how much impact that has on our behavior and, and the way how we engage with the world so when we literally go into this dynamic of feeling with our skin with our hands we're taking full ownership about the neurological function in our nervous system and that's where we're going into action towards our felt sense of pleasure and that in itself does not exist in many people's um capacity of engagement so what happens is when we play that for a certain amount of time and when we're asking other people the permission question may i feel you we literally short circuit in different parts of the brain they allow us to feel and to feel more on a subtle level so that we start to feel ownership about what's going on in our body so what happens is in our mind, in our brain, instead of looping the story, um, the, the why question and, um, and uh, making story and meaning out of everything, we're switching in another part of the brain where we start to notice what we feel and that allows us ownership without making other people responsible. And that's a, that's a really high quality transformative process that happens over time. It won't happen when you do that thing with your hands once and feeling it once. It's just a, it's an, it's a process of uh, transformation. Does it does it answer that? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and and, and, and I wish I could just switch a button in people and then they are just activated. But unfortunately, everybody has to do their own homework. Um. Maybe I have, an, I have a question for you, Lisa. Maybe you just want to share what's your experience about this uh, activating the feeling part and feeling more. What's yeah, your... yeah. So yeah, for me, and it's been now several years, nearly two years since I met you, and I did the first um, awakening the hands, and it, yeah, it really changed all my relationships. Um, it helped me realize a lot of things about myself, and it, I'm a work in progress. You know, I noticed the other day I, I was with someone where I was going into the shadows and I was projecting onto that person. And I wasn't even aware that I was projecting until afterwards. I was making him boring <laughs> because my needs weren't being met. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's, 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 it's mind blowing. It, it's literally changed all my relationships, um, particularly the one with myself. Yeah. Yeah. It's so simple, but it's so difficult too. You know, you make it sound as though when you said, well, self-care is the base. You know, it's easy. To me, that's not, it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. No, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and the, the, thank you very much, Lisa. So the, the beautiful thing about that is that in the level of transformation, when we're activating ourselves, there is no... Um, and to find so i'm doing this since i uh, know 11 12 years now and um so my tantric journey is i don't know over 20 years 
but the, the, the depth of this experience of self-activation and taking ownership, what's going on in my own body, this is, you know, it becomes more subtle, it becomes more real, and it becomes more authentic and definitely more um, honest. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's work in progress till the very end, I imagine. Is there another question from anybody? So what I would like to share now is here the link. I put that in the chat box. And I uh, want to share a little bit about that workshop that comes up on the 4th of April. So if you take this coupon for pillars, you will get a 50 bonus on the regular price. Um, but there is still some low income prices, what is lower than the uh, 50 euro bonus below the regular price. So if you feel like, okay, that's for you, you want to jump in, um, it's valuable till midnight, please feel totally free to take advantage out of that. And if you don't want to take advantage of the 50 euros, you always can purchase the low income price. And um, I'm okay with that. So we do that um, training starting next Sunday on the 4th at 1 o'clock Central European time. It goes for four hours. Please bring a friend, a partner, a lover, a play buddy, anybody you would like to explore this dynamics with. Um, it doesn't need to be a lover. Um, you can do that with a family member or whoever you want to do that with. And there are questions to be answered. Um, uh, for everyone, it doesn't matter who you come with. The important piece is that you need to bring somebody that you can practice that with, because this specific dynamic of activating your feeling body will not go on your own very far. So it goes much deeper when you have another person you can co-regulate with. So we do that for about four weeks, four hours every Sunday, and. Um, uh, we guide you into exercises and dynamics that will uh, transform your relationship into high drama so that you can create the reality with people um, you want to um, have with. So that's from my side. Um, if there is no any other question, uh, please feel free to... Um, go as well to the web page. There is as well a kind of a little chat box now. So I have created that so that you can ask questions. So you don't have to send me an email. You just go to the web page and have this little email chat thing. And I have an app on my phone that I, that this will end up um, as a normal question uh, as, or as an information or, or email. So please feel totally free. There is as well, if you want to get that, the free student handbook on the page, so where you get the information. And um, if this is all too much and you can't commit, you don't want to commit, but you just want to go on the journey of self-love, there is an online course you can um, purchase 37 euros. So, so where you have an opportunity just like to activate this sensing inflow, the feeling part of your body, of your brain, what I really highly recommend for people to do anyway, if you haven't done anything around me. Um, so, and then you uh, come to any other training and then you are prepared. All right, so that's from my side. I hope you uh, got something meaningful, useful out of that. Um, I appreciate you for joining spending your Sunday early evening with me talking about my main favorite topic, that's consent and relating. And have a beautiful Sunday and would love to welcome you at uh, one or the other event. I say bye for now.